Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Elder Scrolls Online Guide video with me, Sherman. Today guys, we are taking a look at the Templar class, and that's right, this is a guide to that Templar class, and it's everything that comes with it. So, primarily these videos that I'm doing on the guides to the classes is to cover the skills, the active abilities, the passive skills, and the ultimate abilities. So this way you guys can see what comes with each class and how they work. So, to get started, we are going to jump in here to the class skill lines for the Templar. The Templar's class skill lines are the Adric Spear, the Dawn's Wraith, and the Restoring Light. Each of these skill lines are not dedicated, but they do help in different roles. And it does help to unlock the passives to your class and the skills because they can offer you different play styles in different situations depending on what role you want to play whether you want to play a healer, a tank, or a damage dealer. Also, just a reminder, the definitions for the roles are located here by hitting the P on your keyboard. It will open up the group and activity finder and you can mouse over each of these role things from tank to healer to damage dealer. And each of them are explained here by the, the developers and how they work. If you also need more information, you can go to the help section scroll all the way down here to where it says groups and you can click on this and you can go through this and this will explain like find or, or replace group mates looking for group farming a group or forming a group an overview of what groups are which is this right here and group roles and it just basically explained how I said to hit the P key on the keyboard and it will bring you to the group activity finder and this tells you and defines how the roles are work within ESO's design <coughs> alright Going back to the class, so the Templar class is a very unique class compared to some of the other classes in the fact that it's more of a divine class than it is anything else. So with all my class guides, I'm going to be starting with the passives in the Adric Spear line, and we're going to work our way to the active abilities and then the ultimate, and then we're going to move on through the skill lines with Dawn's Wraith next and Restoring Light, finally. <coughs> So starting with the passives to the Adric Spear, we have Piercing Spear. This is the first uh, passive you will unlock. And it, what it does is with an Adric Spear ability slotted, that means you have to have one of these Adric Spear abilities on your toolbar. On the toolbar you're using, it'll increase your critical damage by 10% and increase your damage done to blocking targets by 10%. So basically, it increases your damage output, your critical damage output, but it also increases your damage against blocking targets. This is really good for PvP and PvE. Moving on to spill, uh, <coughs> to spear wall. Um, this is when you activating a Adric spear ability, you gain m minor protection for three seconds, reducing your damage taken by eight percent. So whenever you activate any of your Adric spear abilities, you get minor protection for three seconds. It's kind of useless, but hey. Next one is called Burning Light. This is an, a really good passive, but when you deal damage with an Adric Spear ability, you have a 25% chance to deal an additional X amount of physical damage or magic damage, whichever stat is higher, and this effect can occur once every 0.5 seconds. Now, the physical and spell damage on this are based off your mech stamina and weapon damage for the physical side and for the magical side it's spell uh, max magica and spell damage all right moving on to the next one this is called balanced warrior so this one you increase your weapon damage by six percent and your spell resistance by 25 or 2640 so just like the dk they get an extra resistance buff but they also get six percent more weapon damage applied to any um weapon they equip so no matter if you're using a staff, two-handed, dual wield, bow, restoration staff, sword and shield, you're always going to get 6% more weapon damage with that. That's No other class gets that. Alright, so now going over the active abilities, starting with the first one, we have Puncturing Strikes. Now Puncturing Strikes, basically you launch a relentless assault striking enemies in front of you uh, four times with an Adric Spear. The spear deals X amount of magic damage to the enemies and <clears throat> to the closest enemy and X amount of damage to all other enemies that are hit. So 
<coughs> the mainly the one you have targeted is going to take the most amount of damage, while the ones around it are going to take less. Now this does have an 8 meter length by a 6 meter wide radius. So when you activate this, it's a, basically like a, a two blocks stacked in front of each other of damage that you can do. And then the final strike reduces the movement speed of the enemies closest to the, reduces the movement speed of the closest enemy by 70%. This only gets the reduction on one target. There is two morphs for this, the first one being biting jabs. Now this <coughs> alters <coughs> excuse me, the morph to a stamina ability, which means it costs stamina instead of magicka. It also deals physical damage instead of magic damage to the targets. And it still gets the reduced movement speed to the closest enemy by 70%. And then on top of that, activating this ability grants you major savagery, increasing your weapon critical by 2191 for 8 seconds. This is really beneficial for when you're solo playing. If you're not wanting to waste potions, you can use this to boost your weapon damage or your weapon critical higher. All right, moving on to the next ability. The next one is called Puncturing Sweep. It basically has the eight, same 8 meter by 6 meter radius in front of you, and it deals magic damage in it still, and it is a magicka based, cost based skill. So it does damage up front, it does damage to other enemies, and then on top of that it reduces the movement speed of those enemies by 70%, or to the closest enemy by 70% for 2 seconds, and it heals you for 40% of the damage done with this ability. Now that percentage does increase based on the rank of the ability, and also um, certain things in your in your champion levels increase that percentage value. <coughs> Sorry about clearing my throat, guys. Moving on to the next ability, we have Piercing Javelin. Now this one is a magic ability at start. This one, you hurl a, spill, a spear at the enemy with godlike strength, dealing X amount of magic damage and stunning them for two seconds and knocking them back eight meters. Now. That's really good. It's a great knockback, it's a great damage skill, and it can stun. So it's a great CC skill altogether. Now it does have two morphs, one being Magicka, the other one being Stamina. So the Aurora Javelin, this one deals additional damage based on the distance the spear was thrown. So it still deals the, the damage, it does, it still stuns and it still knocks them back 8 meters, but it deals 2% additional damage with the spear for every one meter you are away from the target up to a maximum of 40%. So if you are 28 meters away, you're gonna get 40% more damage. So really powerful in that sense. It, it is kind of sucks that it is a magicka based ability, but it also makes sense because you wanna be at range with some magicka builds. Moving on to the next ability, we have Binding Javelin. Now this one, you hurl a spear at the enemy with godlike spear strength. This is the Stamina Morph. It costs max stamina, or it costs stamina to, th to throw the spear, and it deals physical damage, and it just stuns the target for 2.5 seconds. It no longer knocks them back. Instead, it converts to a stamina ability, stuns the enemy for longer, and doesn't knock them back. It's pretty cool. Next ability is called Focused Charge, and this one, charge, your, uh, charge with your Divine Lance to impel an enemy with dealing X amount of magic damage, if you hit the enemy and it's casting, they are interrupted and stunned for three seconds. This is a great, another great CC that a lot of people don't use for tanks. Because you can stun the enemy and interrupt them if they're casting. It's really nice. Now this also has two morphs. Both of them are Magicka. Starting with the first one, we have Explosive Charge. This one, you charge an area, you impel the enemy in the area, dealing X amount of damage to them. Any enemy hit that is casting is interrupted and stunned for um, three seconds. So basically you charge the enemy <coughs> and you impel it and the it'll explode, dealing damage to all enemies within a six meter radius. <coughs> and then the person you hit, if they're casting, they're interrupted and stunned for three seconds. And then the other one is called toppling charge. This one, charge your, in, your divine lance to impale an enemy dealing X amount of magic damage and stunning them for three seconds and setting them off balance for five, it interrupts the target if they were casted. So <clears throat> this one always stuns the enemy and sets them off balance, regardless if they are casting or not. But you can also interrupt them if they are casting. 
All right, moving on to the next ability, it is called Spear Shards. And this one basically is pretty cool. I like this one. You send a spear into the heavens to bring down the Shower of Divine Wrath, dealing <clears throat> X amount of magic damage to enemies in the area and an additional X amount of damage every second for eight seconds. An ally can activate the synergy called Bless Shards, restoring X amount of magicka or stamina, whichever maximum is higher. So a stamina person is going to get stamina per back, a magicka person is going to get magicka back. Now this also has two morphs, the first one being Luminous Shards. Now, unlike the uh, original one, it's, it's very much like the original one, I should say. It still does the magic damage, magic damage over time, every second for 8 seconds. But now, when you activate the Holy Shard synergy, you get magic, magicka, or stamina, whichever remains higher. And then you restore an additional amount of magicka and stamina, whichever is lower. So this one gives both resources back bigger on the, the primary stat and a little less on the, on the lower stat. So if it's like... If you have higher stamina, you're going to get more stamina back and less magicka back. But if it's the opposite way, you're going to get more magicka, less stamina. But you still get both resources back. The other one is called Blazing Spear. Now, Blazing Spear is a really good one because this one, the damage over time is increased. So basically, it still does the X amount of damage up front. It deals increased damage over time every second for 8 seconds. And people can activate the Bless Shard Synergy, restoring magicka or stamina, whichever is higher. Moving on to the next ability, this is called Sun Shield, and basically you surround yourself in the solar rays, granting a damage shield that absorbs up to X amount of damage for 6 seconds. This portion of the ability scales off your max health, so the higher health pool you have, the bigger the shield. Nearby enemies take additional magic damage when you activate the shield, and each enemy hit increases the shield strength by 4%. Now, there is two morphs. And the first one is called Radiant Ward. Now this does pretty much the same thing as the other one. It gives you a shield for 6 seconds uh, based on your max health. But nearby enemies take X amount of magic damage when the shield is activated. And each enemy hit increases the shield strength by 6% to a maximum of 9%. So just letting you know. At max rank. <clears throat> it's a very powerful shield then. The other one is called Blazing Shield. Now this one... Still does everything that the other one does. It gives you a shield for six seconds. It's based off of your max health. And then nearby enemies increase the shield strength by 4% when the shield is activated. So for each enemy nearby, it, it, it increases the shield strength by 4% and actually goes up to, to a higher value. It's um, when you have certain things in your CP and everything. But when the shield expires, it explodes outwards, dealing X amount of damage, or t percentage amount of damage, it absorbed to nearby enemies. So it can, any damage it absorbs, it deals 21% of that back to the enemy. So it can deal quite a bit of damage back, especially when you have like a 15k shield. You'll deal pretty much like 5 to 10k back. Depending. And that depends on if you proc your burning light because any of these abilities can proc burning light all right moving on to the ultimate we have what's called radial sweep and this one is an arc ability basically you swing this spear in a huge um, arc in front of you in an eight meter arc and when you swing the spear around with holy vengeance you deal x amount of magic damage to all enemies nearby or nearby enemies and an additional amount of damage every second for six seconds now it does have two morphs the first one being called Empowering Sweep. Now this converts it to a physical damage ability and the duration is extended for each enemy hit and grants them power for the duration. So if you hit the enemy with this, what it does is it does the damage up front and then all nearby enemies and an additional amount of damage every two seconds for six seconds. That duration is extended by <clears throat> two seconds for each enemy hit and then you gain in power for the duration of the six seconds. Um, so for the next six seconds, every time you throw a light attack, uh, you're going to get 40% more damage. Alright, moving on to the next ability. We have Crescent Sweep. Now this um, stays a magic damage ability. It does all the, the same things as the first one, but this one deals additional damage to enemies in front of you. So enemies in your path will be hit for 60% more damage. <coughs> 
And that is it for the Adric Spear line. We're going to go ahead and move on over to the Dawn's Wraith. And starting with the passives here, you get Enduring Rays. This one increases the duration of your Sunfire, Eclipse, Solar Flare, and Nova abilities by two seconds. The next one you get is called Prism. This casting a Dawn's Wraith ability generates three ultimate. That effect can happen every six seconds. And then we have Illuminate, <coughs> which casting a Dawn's Wraith ability grants minor sorcery to you and your group for 20 seconds, increasing your spell damage by 10%. And then we have Restoring Spirit. This one reduces the cost of Magicka, Stamina, and Ultimates abilities by 4%. So any Magicka ability, Stamina ability, whether it's a weapon ability, any, any Stamina ability pretty much, any Magic ability pretty much, and any Ultimate is reduced by 4%. Alright, moving on to this active skill, starting with Sunfire. Basically, you blast the enemy with a Charged Radiant Heat. It's a ball. You throw a ball. <laughs> and it deals flame damage and an additional amount of flame damage over 10 seconds and reduces their movement speed by 40% for 5 seconds. Upon activation, you gain Major Prophecy, increasing your spell critical rating by 2191. <clears throat> Alright, moving on to the next ability, or the, the morphs. This does have two morphs, the first one being Vampire's Bane. Now this deals X amount of damage and X amount of damage over time, but that duration of time that it lasts for is increased to 14 seconds from 10 seconds. So you get four more seconds added to the damage over time. It still reduces the movement speed of the enemy by 40% and you still get major prophecy. The next one is called Reflective Light. Now this one you blast up to three enemies with a charge of radiant heat dealing X amount of damage and X amount of damage over 10 seconds reducing their movement speed by 40% for 5 seconds and still gain major prophecy. So this one splits the projectile in, in <laughs> allowing it to affect two additional nearby enemies. So it'll hit three targets in total. It's really good for trash cleanup. And if you guys don't get that, it's something that we say in dungeons and in trials. Alright, the next ability is called Solar Flare. Now this one does have a cast time of one second when you first get it. And basically, you con uh, conjure a, a ball of solar energy to heave at an enemy, dealing X amount of magic damage. It also grants you Empower for 5 seconds, increasing the damage of your next light attack by 40%. It does also have two morphs, both of them being Magicka. One is called Dark Flare. This one con conjure a ball of solar energy to heave at your enemies, dealing X amount of magic damage. It afflicts the target and nearby enemies with major defile, reducing their healing received and health recovery by 30% for 6 seconds. It also grants you Empower for 5 seconds, increasing your damage of your next light attack by 40%. And the next one is called Solar Barrage. This one you cause, conjure a solar energy to blast enemies around you. It basically makes this flaming wave come off of you, dealing magic damage every 2 seconds for, for 8 seconds. And then when, while the ability is active, you get the, the Empower for the 8 seconds. Um, increasing your damage done by your Light Attacks, or yeah, by 40%. Now this one deals damage to multiple blasts around you and it, instead of uh, at a single enemy. So, it's really nice. All right, next ability is called Backlash. Now this one, you summon a Expanding Beam of Pure Sunlight to to doom an enemy, dealing X amount of damage to them and copying all their damage taken for 6 seconds and releasing 20% of, of it as additional magic damage to them. Magic damage copied would be X amount. Now this has two morphs. It has a Stamina Morph and a Magicka Morph. The first one being the Magicka Morph, uh, Purifying Light, it still works pretty much the same, except now it gets a special benefit added to it. So it still deals the damage up front, and it copies 20% of the damage for 6 seconds, and then um, releases that as magic damage. But now, when the effect ends, a pool of sunlight remains attached to the enemy, healing you and nearby allies for X amount of health every 2 seconds for 6 seconds. It does have a large radius around it that it covers that the heal affects, so really nice. The next ability is the Stamina Morph. This is called Power of the Light. This one converts to a stamina ability. It does physical damage instead of magic damage, and it deals 20% of the damage over six. Uh, that's 
basically copied over six seconds as physical damage to the enemy. But targets are afflicted with minor fracture and minor breach, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 1320 for six seconds. A lot of stamina DPS use this because of that, because it gives that minor fracture, minor breach, and it's really easy to keep this applied, especially during a rotation. The next ability we have is called Eclipse. Now, Eclipse isn't a widely used ability, but I will say I use it quite a bit. Basically, this is an instant cast ability. It's single target, 28 meter range, six second duration. I should have done this with all of them. And it costs Magicka. So you envelop your enemy in a lightless sphere for six seconds, causing magic damage each time they use a direct damage attack. This effect can, can occur once every 0.75 seconds. Pretty much any time they go to attack you, they're gonna take damage. And it does last for six seconds. Now there's two morphs, both of them being Magicka. The first one being Total Dark, Envelop your enemy in a lightless sphere for six seconds, causing magic damage and healing you for uh, X amount each time they use a direct damage attack, and that can occur every 0.5 seconds or 7.5 seconds. And then the next one is called Unstable Core. This does pretty much the same thing, except now when you when it does its effect, it deals damage um, every time they do direct damage but it places a volatile magnet energy on the and an enemy which explodes after six seconds dealing x amount of damage to them and nearby enemies and that nearby range of enemies is i believe six meters so it's a pretty big radius around them but it'll deal additional damage i really like in the stable core <clears throat> next up we have radiant destruction now this is considered an execute ability so we'll explain that as we go through Basically, you burn an enemy with a ray of light of holy fire, dealing X amount of damage over 1.8 seconds. It deals up to 480% more damage to enemies below 50% health. What I do in my rotation if I'm using this ability is, when I get the enemy below 50% health, I will start activating this in my rotation, and then <clears throat> when I get them below 25% health, I make this my primary spammable. So I'll activate this, light attack, activate this, light attack, and swap bars. And I'll do that, usually I can do two of those like that, two rotations with that, and then the enemy's gonna be dead, depending on how much health they have. Now, just like all other abilities, it does have two morphs, both of them being Magicka, starting with the first one, we have Radiant Glory. Now this one, you heal for a percentage of the damage inflicted. So while you're dealing the damage that it takes for every um, second for basically it takes constantly throughout <clears throat> for 1.8 seconds and it'll heal you for 20 percent of the damage inflicted and that 20 percent actually goes up on the, based on the math rank and your cp the next one is called radiant oppression now this one you burn an enemy with a ray of holy fire of course dealing x amount of damage over uh 1.8 seconds it deals 450 percent more damage when the enemy is below 50 percent health and also deals 20 percent more damage in proportion to their current max uh, to your current max magica so the higher max magic you have you get 20 percent more damage and it gets stronger so it's it's really nice the higher max magic you have all right so now that we've seen that we're going to move on to the ultimate ability <coughs> called nova now nova is a really cool one this one you call down a fragment of the sun dealing x amount of magic damage every second for 10 seconds to the enemies in the area and afflicting them with major maim, reducing their damage done by 30%. This is a great support damage skill. An ally near the, the fragment can activate the supernova synergy, dealing X amount of magic damage to all enemies in the area and stunning them for 2.5 seconds. The nice thing about this is not only does it do the damage over time and offer that great group support with major maim, but it also has a synergy attached to it, which makes it even better. And it's a super kind of expensive one, but it works out really well. Moving on to the two morphs, we have the first one, which is called Solar Prison. This basically does the same thing as the original. It does the minor maim. It does the damage every second for 10 seconds. But this time, when you activate the Synergy Gravity uh, Crush, it'll deal X amount of damage to all enemies in the area and stuns them for 5 seconds. So it's actually got a longer duration stun and a greater amount of damage on the Synergy. <coughs> The other one is called Solar Disturbance, and basically what happens is this one, when you hit the enemies with this stuff, uh, it still does the major, the magic damage every second for 10 seconds, the major maim, 
Um, but the major main persists on enemies who leave the Nova for six seconds. So it will stay on them for six seconds after they leave it. And then, of course, it still has the Synergy Supernova on it, which allows people to activate that Synergy, dealing magic damage to all enemies and stunning them for 2.5 seconds. All right, moving into the last tree, the Restoring Light. And this is the really uh, more healer-centric tree. So starting with the first passive, we have Mending. This increases the healing effects from your Restoring Light abilities by up to 12% in proportion to the severity of the target's wounds. So basically that 12%, uh, you get it when they're hurt worse. The more damage they have taken, the more powerful your heals hit for. So it's really nice for that. The next one is called Sacred Ground. Now this one, when standing in your own cleansing ritual, this one right here, Rune Focus, which is the bottom one, or Rite of Passage Area Effects, and Rite of Passage is your ultimate, uh, and up to four seconds after leaving them, you gain minor mending, increasing your healing done by 8%. Enemy standing in the cleansing ritual, ruin of this, whatever, has their movement speed reduced by 30% for the duration. So even if they're in the cleansing ritual, they actually get reduced movement speed by 30%. If they stand in this circle, they get 40%, 30% movement speed reduction, and Rite of Passage gives them that as well. All right. Next is called Light Weaver. Now this one provides a bonus to four Restoring Light abilities and increases the duration of your Restoring Light by 20%. And Healing Ritual grants two ultimate to allies healed under 60% health. And then channel Channeling Rite of Passage grants you X amount of physical and spell resistance. So this makes you just super tanky when you're using certain things. You're Restoring Light, which is... Um, Oh, I guess it's uh, Restoring Light <coughs> is the whole skill line, but you get bonuses for the duration of Restoring Aura, which is your um, AoE ability. It's really cool. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. And then your r Healing Ritual, which is this right here. And then your other one, the, the Channeling Passage. You get different things for it. Now, moving on to the final passive, we have Master Ritualist. And this one increases your resurrection speed by 20%. Resurrected allies return with 100% more health. And you give uh, gives you a 50% chance to fill an empty soul gem after each successful resurrection. This is why a lot of people play Templars. Is they have an easier time resing people because they get that increased speed. But on top of that, they also give back 100% more health. <coughs> All right. So now, going over the active abilities, starting with the first ability, Rushed Ceremony. This one, Beacon, your inner light, healing yourself or a wounded ally in front of you for X amount of health. And it does have two morphs. Both of them are Magicka-based. The first one being Honor the Dead. This one, you when you cast the, the Beacon of Light, it heals yourself or nearby ally for X amount. By healing anyone who is below 75% health, restores 60% of the ability's cost over six seconds is magicka so this is a really good one because it will give you magicka back after you cast it if the person's below 75 percent health the next one is called breath of life now what this does is this heals a second person um, besides the initial person so this one will heal yourself or a, near, or a wounded ally in front of you for x amount of health and it also heals one other injured target in the area for X amount of health. It's a smaller heal, but it does come out to be more effective to use the, the Breath of Life if you're going to play Primary Healer. The next ability is called Healing Ritual. Now, this costs a lot of Magicka, guys. It doesn't matter what you're playing. Besides a Breton, this thing is going to cost you a lot of Magicka. And if you're not wearing Light Armor, it's going to cost you even more. So this one, focus your Spiritual Devotion, healing you and your nearby allies for X amount of health. It does have um, two morphs, both being Magicka, both costing the same amount. So what this one does here is when you heal um, you or nearby ally, so this one will heal you and nearby allies for X amount. It's a 10 meter radius around you. You heal a single ally outside that ability's radius for an additional amount of health. And then the other one, and that's Ritual of Rebirth. The other one is called Hasty Prayer. This one you heal um, the, you or somebody else 
and aff affected targets gain major minor expedition, increasing their movement speed by 10% for 5 seconds. It's a really great, like, oh god, there's a big AoE coming, let's get out of here. Boom, you cast this, everyone runs out. <clears throat> the next thing is restoring aura. This is a, a really widely used, or has two really good wide, wide uses, and I really like it. So the, the primary restoring aura, champion the cause of divine glory to apply minor magic of steel to all enemies around you for 24 seconds, causing you and your allies to restore 300 magicka every second when damaging them. So this means every enemy in a, 20, in a 12 meter radius around you gets minor magic of steel applied to them, which gives you that 300 magic back every second when damaging them. While slotted, you gain minor fortitude, minor endurance, and minor intellect, increasing health, stamina, and mag magic recovery by 10%. This is why a lot of people use this, is because it gives you those three resources in recovery back. Now, it has two morphs. One being Radiant Aura, which pretty much does the same thing, but the radius is increased from 12 meters to 25 meters. So it has a greater radius in which you can apply that minor magic of steel to enemies. The next one is called Repentance, and this one, um, it completely changes how the ability works almost. You concentrate, uh, consecrate the souls of the fallen, healing you and your allies for X amount of health and restoring X amount of stamina to you for each corpse um, nearby. So when you soul, pull the souls out of your enemies, you basically heal your allies and then you give yourself stamina. It's a really nice way to maintain your resources inside of a dungeon or a trial. <clears throat> and then, of course, while slotted, you still gain that minor fortitude, minor endurance, and minor intellect, increasing health, stamina, and magic recovery by 10%. And just to make sure that you guys see this, both of these are instant cast, no resources. All right. The next one is called Cleansing Ritual. Now this one, exalt the Sacred Light of the Adra, cleansing up to two harmful effects from yourself immediately and healing you and nearby allies for X amount of health every two seconds for 12 seconds. Allies in the area can activate the Purify Synergy, cleansing all harmful effects from themselves and healing for X amount of health. Now this ability scales with your highest offensive stats. Now a lot of people don't understand what the offensive stats mean. It's your weapon damage and your spell damage and your weapon crit and spell crit. But it also plays into your max magic and stamina to a small degree. <clears throat> so those are what your offensive stats are. All right. So the higher your max stamina or magic, the higher effect this is going to have. The higher your weapon damage and spell damage is, the better effect this is going to have. The higher your weapon and spell crit is, the better chance this is going to crit. All right. Now moving on to the other two um, morphs. So the first morph is called Ritual of Retribution. This is my preferred use. Basically, it still does the remove two harmful effects, but while in the area, the allies are healed for X amount and enemies take X amount of magic damage every two seconds for 12 seconds. Still has the purify synergy, but now it's scale and it still scales with your highest offensive stat, but it gets that damage added to it. The other one is called Extended Ritual. And this one increases the duration and the amount of hateful effects uh, cleansed from yourself. So to remove five harmful effects, it lasts for 18 seconds instead of like this one lasting for 12. So this one gets six more seconds added to it, healing people every two seconds for that 18 seconds. And people can still use the Purify Synergy and the ability still scales off your max offensive stats. Now, Rune Focus. This is a really cool one. This is your defensive Rune uh, defensive buff. So this one, you create a rune of celestial protection. While active, the rune grants you major resolve and major ward, increasing physical and spell resist by 5,280. And then standing within the rune increases spell uh, physical resist and spell resistance granted from this by 50%. It doesn't increase all your resistances, just the resistances from this. The so 5,280 get increased by 50%, making this 7,000 and something resistances <clears throat> now it does have two morphs one being a magic morph one being stamina the magic morph is called channeled focus 
And the only thing that happens now with this is instead of just giving you the physical war, uh, physical resistance and spell resistance, it also recovers Magicka, uh, 240 Magicka every second. And then you still get the 50% while standing in the Ruin itself. Um, and then the other one is Restoring Focus. And this one just changes into a Stamina ability. It still gives the physical and spell resist. It still gets that extra resistances for standing in the circle. And then it gives you 240 stamina every second for the duration of 17 seconds. And remember, this one, they both have 17 second durations. So these are actually the lowest um, duration abilities for your resistances that are castable. The only one who has a less um, thing for the Major Warden Major Resolve is Nightblade. <coughs> All right. Now that you guys have seen that, we are going to talk about the Rite of Passage Ultimate. And this one is really cool. So you channel the grace of the gods, healing you and nearby allies for X amount of health every second for four seconds. You cannot, be, you cannot move while channeling, but you gain immunity to all disabling effects. This is awesome. It's got a 20 meter radius around it when you're channeling this. And it's got a four second cast time. So it takes four seconds for the whole process to go through. But once you do it, it's uh, healing people constantly, and you can't be affected by disabling effects, so it's really nice. There are two morphs. There's Remembrance, which you take less damage when you're channeling the heal. So over the four seconds, you gain major protection, reducing your damage taken by 30%. Sorry, not for the four, the four second duration, for a seven second duration. So even after the spell ends, you still get three seconds of major protection. And then the other one, Practice Incarnation, increases the duration of the channel. It goes up to 6 seconds from 4 seconds. <clears throat> and that is it for the Templar class. That is all its passives, active abilities, and ultimates for all three skill lines. I hope that this, um, these class guides are, are helpful and give you guys a lot of decent information to where you understand it a little bit more, how, to, how you can use the class and use the abilities applied to the class. So... And that is it for this video. So if you guys like this video, you guys know what's coming next, go ahead and hit that like button. If you guys want to see more videos by me, you can subscribe. Other than that, I want to thank you all for watching. Until next time, have a wonderful day. And this guy might see you in game. Bye.